This is the Airblade UAV Transformer Mini, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build it. This is a long-range micro which can fly for as many as 30 minutes on a lithium-ion battery. It's a 4-inch frame with a 2.5mm base plate and a 2mm top plate. We've got the Beta FPV Toothpick F4 20 amp all-in-one flight controller with an XT30 and capacitor pre-attached. The Airblade Superman 1404 4850KV brushless motor the Cadex Vista with the Nebula camera, the TBS M8 GPS, the Crossfire Nano receiver, a TPU holder for the GPS, and the Cadex Vista antenna. So the first thing we need to do is add these little gummies to the flight controller. These can be a little tricky to insert, but ultimately you just need to squeeze them and shove them through. You can use a screwdriver or some tweezers, but be careful not to puncture them. Now the flight controller didn't come with any spacers, so you're going to need some M2 nylon nuts or O-rings to separate the board from the frame. Since I didn't have any spare nylon nuts, I needed to tape the screws in place so I could secure the flight controller. Use the included steel nuts to hold it in place, and these don't need to be torqued down very much. Finger tight is good enough. Now you should have a little gap below the board to avoid shorts. Next we need to mount the motors. Just make sure the screws don't touch the motor windings. Five millimeter should do the trick, but always double check. Also, if you're going to be lazy like me, don't forget to add Loctite and all four screws at the end. And finally, make sure the motors spin freely. You might need to put a little pressure on the wire sheathing to clear the bell. It's a really good idea to use zip ties to keep all the wires straight and under a little tension. Then you can use that tension to tape them to the arms with some nice cloth tape. Now, when you solder the wires, try not to add too much solder to the pads. They're really tiny and it's easy to accidentally bridge them. I did it several times myself. And if that happens, just hit it with a flux pin and slice through the middle with your iron. And when you're done, it might help to double check your solders with a magnifying glass. And I don't like the look of zip ties on my arms, so I went ahead and removed them and added a little more cloth tape. Looks much better. Now let's wire up the receiver. Here we've got the Crossfire Nano, but you can skip this step if you're using the DJI remote. Here I like to use Bluetack to hold the receiver. I attach the four wires. From black to white, they are ground, 5 volt, channel 1, and channel 2. Now you might be able to give yourself a little more slack on the wires here, but any less and you'll be tugging at the antenna. To solder to the flight controller, find the 5 volt and ground pads up front and the RX1 and TX1 pads. Channel 1, the yellow wire, goes to RX1, and channel 2, the white wire, goes to TX1. These are for your control signal and telemetry, respectively. Now turn on your radio and put it into bind mode. If you've got a smoke stopper, you may want to use that now, or what I did was test the wiring for shorts with my multimeter. Give it a few moments to bind and to update the firmware on the receiver. Once that's done, you're all bound. You can use the clear shrink tube that comes with it, but I prefer a snug fit with my own so I can take it on and off. And you can leave the antenna off so it doesn't get in the way. Here's a little trick for a brand new GPS. Make a 1S adapter so you can put it outside for 20 minutes or so to download your local satellite data. You'll get a 3D fix a lot faster when it comes time to fly. Just make sure you leave the beige side pointed up. Put a pair of standoffs in the GPS holder and screw just one side to the frame. Feed the wires through the hole and find the 5 volt and ground pads at the rear of the board here. Use the RX2 and TX2 pads up front for the signal wires. The green wire goes to TX2 and the blue wire goes to RX2. Plug your GPS in and you can even plug a battery in and download satellite data at this point too. Next, let's add some wires to the Cadex Vista. The pads are much bigger when you flip it upside down and since we're using Crossfire we only need 4 wires. Battery, ground, RX, and TX. You need some 20mm M2 screws, which don't come with the frame or the Cadex Vista, so you need to buy these separately. And to give the Cadex Vista some clearance, you need to add a stack of two M2 nuts or M2 nuts and O-rings. Now send the antenna cable through the hole and put it off to the side. I tape the wires to the bottom so they don't overlap and then slide the Vista into place, being careful not to damage the camera cable. Use some M2 nuts to secure it all into place. Next, solder the power leads to the BAT Plus and ground pads. The Vista can take up to 6S, so we're fine powering it with the battery directly. Now, solder the white wire to RX6 and the yellow wire to TX6. 
After you're all done, it's a good idea to check that you don't have continuity between any of the wires. Swing the GPS mount out so you can plug in the antenna. Unscrew the bracket, and with a little patience and finesse, you should be able to plug it in. Reattach the bracket, and screw the final standoff to the base plate. Now let's mount the camera. This frame was made for the full-size DJI camera, so if you're using the Nebula, add the adapter. You might want to wrap the camera cable around the receiver so it doesn't fall out and get chopped up by the props. Screw the side plates to the camera using the longest M2 screws that came with the kit. Also, make sure you've got the camera right side up. I did it upside down and I had to go back and refilm this. Get the aluminum standoffs and screw them to the frame with the included M3 screws. Now you can seat the camera bracket and put the top plate on. It's a good idea to add something like UMA grip to keep the battery from sliding around. To mount the crossfire antenna, we've got this little sleeve that fits onto the top plate. If you've got one, use a longer M3 screw and slide it on through. Keep in mind that when you mount your antenna like this, you need to run your antenna vertically on your radio as well. Finish screwing the top plate down, and if you didn't already, make sure to add a little Loctite to the motor screws to prevent them from vibrating loose. Add a little double-sided tape to the GPS, because yes, it will pop out in a crash and you may lose it. Now, there are a couple ways to secure the antenna. You can use hot glue, but if you've got these little screws, it's better to screw it into the TPU. I got these off the Naked GoPro kit from Beta FPV. Finally, you'll want to pass the crossfire antenna through the top plate so the receiver doesn't pop out and get chopped up by the props. And it's done. Now, before you put the props on, you'll need to configure this in Betaflight. Follow the link in the description to the written guide on rotorbuilds.com for step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure the ports, motors, receiver, and GPS. Let's get the dry weight. It weighs 140 grams, but we need a battery strap, so it's really 144 grams dry. If you've got a 3D printer, you can print mounts for the Insta360 Go or a Naked GoPro Lite. You just need a 20mm aluminum standoff and a pair of M3 screws. It mounts above the FPV camera and supports any angle you'd like. With the GoPro Lite, it weighs 171 grams. I made this little balance lead adapter to power the GoPro, and with an 850 milliamp hour battery, it weighs 285 grams, 525 milliamp hours, and 550 milliamp hours. I have this Alline 4S lithium ion battery, and with an XT30 adapter, it gets about 15 minutes of flight time. All up, it weighs 375 grams. Here it is with the Insta360 Go. With that, it weighs about 162 grams. With an 850 milliamp hour battery, it weighs 271 grams. And with 550 milliamp hours, you can easily clear 250 grams. All right, let's take it for a flight. I've got the 850 milliamp hour battery and the GemFam Hurricane 4024 Biblade props. So this quad is awesome. It's by far my favorite build to date. It's small, flies far, and flies forever. So far, I like flying a 4S 850 milliamp hour battery, and that gets about six to eight minutes, but it'll fly longer on lower KV motors. These motors are better suited for 2S or 3S, so I'm gonna make some lithium ion packs. I'll make a follow-up video showing how to spot weld these packs and how they perform. I should be able to get 30 minutes on a 2S 21700 4500 milliamp hour pack. If you want a lighter feel, you can fly a smaller LiPo, like a 4S 550 or 650 milliamp hour pack. You'll stay under 250 grams and get about 4 to 6 minutes of freestyle flight. With Crossfire, you can easily take this a few miles away, so your only bottleneck is the video feed. DJI advertises about 2.5 miles, but I've seen some folks fly as far as 5 miles on this system, but I wouldn't do it without thoroughly testing GPS Rescue. Overall, this is a pretty involved build. It's definitely more for intermediate builders, but it's a great way to learn how to configure GPS in Betaflight, and a great opportunity to get into making and flying lithium ion cells rather than LiPos. For more information about this build, including photos, configuration, and a detailed part list, check the link to rotorbuilds.com in the description. I developed Rotorbuilds, so if you haven't already, go sign up and post your builds. We've also got a Facebook group, and follow me on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please drop a like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.